Hey guys, welcome back to the arena. So made just a couple changes here to the mono white humans deck and really kind of, you know, I had a lot of fun taking it through a standard event. I probably will again here. So if you'd like to see another standard event with a deck, uh, drop it in the comments. If you're new here to my channel, thank you so much for stopping by. I really do appreciate you. And if you do end up liking my content, please consider subscribing and maybe sharing it with a friend of yours. For my returning viewers, thank you guys so much again for coming back. I really do appreciate you. The uh, link in the description will be for the deck list, both on untap.gg and moxfield.com. And then in addition, there'll also be links to uh, other playlists of mine if you wanna see more of my content. Um, so I also wanna give a very big thank you to my members. Um, if you choose to become a member, you will have access, uh, early access to my content for as little as $1.99 a month. So thank you guys so much for becoming members. And here's exactly how you do it if you would like to become a member. If you would like to become a member and help support my channel, you can do so. Just click on the join button right next to where it says subscribe if you haven't already subscribed. Um, or if you would like to just support my channel just on a one-time basis, you can also click the super thanks button uh, here right on the, uh, also right under the banner here for the video. So. These are both great ways to support the channel. I really appreciate you guys, and I couldn't do this without you. So thank you guys so much again for your consideration. All right, let's get into some games. Okay, so let's take a look at the changes here to the deck. So I wanted kind of access to a little bit more removal. Um, I just kind of kept running into, you know, just problem decks like Mono Black, which just has a lot of tough threats to deal with. And so I decided to add in three copies of Ossification, which I've really liked so far. Um, I know that kind of um, more sort of stock lists of mono white humans, which are doing pretty well. If you go to untap.gg, I think there's sort of a stock list that runs, I wanna say two copies of Ossification, and it has a win rate around 64% in best of one ladder. So, you know, the deck has been doing well. Um, and I like Ossification, although I, I didn't really see other lists running March of Otherworldly Light, which I absolutely swear by. So now we've got three copies of Ossification. I ended up shaving um, some of the one drops. The Hopeful Initiate, I think it'd be a powerful card. It just sort of wasn't doing enough. It wasn't as impactful as I wanted it to be. So I ended up shaving the Hopeful Initiates. I'm still running one copy of Skrelv, just because it is it does pair very well with Brutal Cathar. Although at one point I was running two copies and when I when you draw them uh, both copies, it's really awkward. And so yeah, I noticed that I was losing some of those games. So I ended up just cutting down to one copy. Um, and then for the top end here, I shaved one copy of Night Errant of Eos, partially because we have fewer number of one drops. And since we're not running Resolute Reinforcements, it's sometimes a little tough to hit the mana slash um, number of creatures to get this into play. So I shaved it down to three copies and then I added in one copy of Sanguine Evangelist. So even though it's not a human, this is a fantastic top end that you do certainly see in like Boros Convoke. It's also very good in Mono White Humans. So um, I think the other minor change is I shaved down to two copies of Thalia, which still feels pretty good. I think three is great if you can afford it, but I just wanted the extra removal. So that was part of the reasoning. And then with the addition of Ossification, I did cut out the copies of Mishra's Foundry. And I also went down to three copies of Yganjo just to make sure that I had enough basics to be able to support it. Um, it is a really nice card to have access to. It's one of the few ways we can deal with Planeswalkers. Um, so, you know, having access to it, I think is really worth it. So let's go ahead and jump into some matches. I've been climbing ladder here kind of slowly sort of taking my time. I think we're currently, I want to say, in like Platinum Tier 2. But let's go ahead and jump in for some more. Also, I don't know if you guys ended up playing in the Best of One Qualifier uh, play-in today. I took it through... Um, I did like a quick trial with um, the uh, Mono White Humans Explorer deck, uh, which was actually pretty fun. I ended up going, I think, 4 and 2, so... It is a fun deck if you just, I think if you just like Google like top 250 um, MTGA Explorer decks, it should be one of the options that comes up, has a decent win rate. 
And uh, if you want, um, I guess drop in the comments, I can, you know, uh, respond if you want to see a copy of that list or put it in the description or something like that. So at any rate, here is great opening hand. We've got access to good mana, stuff to do. I also like having access to a little bit more removal against mono red. It's definitely been, you know, kind of a big problem area. So just having good access to more removal has been great. Okay, now we're happy to march whatever we need to here. Maybe we can get them to invest in like a pump spell or something like that, which would be great. Guess they're not falling for it, that's okay. Um, we're still happy to kind of slow down the, um, the damage here a little bit. And now with Adeline with the Ganjo backup, we should be in decent position. So if they have the Monstrous Rage or I guess the Play With Fire, really anything here, I think we can probably take this hit, drop down to like eight or something, and then just try to go ahead and take over the game afterwards. This is a tough spot. Like I could see blocking here, but I think we can weather the, the life hit and then just try to stabilize at like four or five or something like that. So a couple options here. We could play the Brutal Cathar. Um, we could get Evangelist going just to get ourselves a couple bodies. I kind of like that actually. Um, or we could try to go into like Knight Errant here and try to pick up some more life gain which is a decent Decent option here as well. That does get rid of our Iganjo. And I think I want the Evangelist here just in case they have like another creature to push in with. And it's also kind of helps if they have like a slick shot show off. So I think that's probably going to be my pick here is to go with the Evangelist. And then we'll hold the Iganjo in case we need it next turn, I think. Okay, so unfortunately I did draw into some cards there. Ancestral Anger has definitely been pretty good in this deck. Um, so I think we just have to respect as much damage as they can possibly throw at us here. So... And then just kind of hope we survive here. Yeah, unfortunately they kind of got there. So that's, I guess this is the problem that you run into. Like there's that critical point where we decided whether we wanted to take the damage or if we should have blocked. And they definitely, I think that the Ancestral Anger has definitely got them the extra gas they needed to finish the game. So in hindsight, might've been better there to just block, lose our Adeline and then drop the next one. I guess if we'd had you know, something like Lunark Veteran in play or access to in our hand, that might have been a slightly different choice. But I was thinking if we had like the window, we could just sort of take over the game.
Okay, another mono red deck here. Really happy to get Thalia into play. And then once we have Thalia, we can get Copper Coat just to give another added level of uh, protection. But we do want to be racing here. <coughs> yeah, if they want to take a turn off to kill Thalia, I'm totally okay with that. Alright, now we're super happy. Oh, actually, Veteran is pretty good. I think we've got to respect the show off. Like, this card just is just so out of hand that we just have to Brutal Cathar, even if we know they're going to kill the Brutal Cathar next turn, just to slow them down enough, just to kind of get back into it. So, I think I'm happy to do that. Just really respecting their, uh... yeah, what they can do with that card. Now, the question is, do we get in with both here? Um, I think there's a decent chance that they have, like, Monstrous Rage. And so if they have Monstrous Rage, we don't want to just get blown out by it. So I think we just push. And then, especially since we've got Lunark Veteran in hand, we can soak a little bit more damage. Yeah, we certainly don't want to make this trade. And then I think we just want the Copper Coat here, even though we could put like more damage output with these guys, um, just for the added layer, layer protection on Thalia. Definitely pushing with Brutal Cathar. Probably have to start racing here with Officer. We're at 12, their damage output is decent, but I think we, we hold back the Thalia and then we threaten lethal next turn. Yeah. Yeah, with the update to the removal, we now basically have 14 pieces of removal. We've got a full play set of Brutal Cathars and March of Otherworldly Light. And then three copies of the, oh, what it's called, the new one that I just put in the deck. Um, the name is escaping me, the two mana exile. Um, at any rate, that enchantment, and then also three copies of Iganjo. Hand looks great. Uh, this could be the life gain deck um, or just like super friends. I think either way we want to start out here with Dahlia just to kind of slow down all their nonsense. Especially if they have cut down. Okay, Esper, Esper Legends. Part of me wants to march their Denic because they're, I mean, most likely they're going to they're try to play like Rafine next turn. So I kind of want to do that, but I also want to kind of get going on our creatures. So I think maybe it's better to just double creature this turn. And then just set up for Knight Errant. And here I think you do want to drop the adversary just as a 3 1, just so we can make sure we have enough creatures to get this going. Um, and having the life. The lifelike access is still super important, but we don't really have time to like get this to be um, a four mana pump creature. So question is, do they have the Rafine? Okay, no Rafine. Well, that's good news. We could attack in and threaten Iganjo, but I think we just want to kind of get Knight Errant going. So question is, do we want to save the Iganjo or not? I kind of like playing Veteran first with Iganjo down, just so we have the three extra mana in case they 
try to um, counter it with uh, no more lies. Holding a ganja is pretty good though. Yeah, I think I'm just gonna I think I'm just gonna go for it. Hold the Aganjo. If we lose veteran, it's okay. It's not amazing, but it's it's okay. And now we can get the Knight Errant going. I guess the other question here is do we wanna push with adversary? Hmm. I think it's actually reasonable to push with adversary here. Like they could have virtue, but either way, I think we're happy to trade with whatever. Ah, oh, that's fine. It's kind of good, because now we can get Knight Errant going. They probably would have preferred to kill that. Get a nice mix of some life gain here. Now do we want to go for Veteran or hold the Aganjo? I, ah, I like the Aganjo. I guess we have March. And getting the mana out for recruitment officer feels pretty good too, so I think I'm just gonna go for it. <clears throat> so they probably have what do they have? Maybe another shoot the sheriff, something like that. Could push copper coat here, then we don't get to officer. We do get to push some more damage though, so I think it's I think it's worth doing. This way we can also, I guess, like push with our veterans, and if they block one, we can just replay it as a flyer. Although I guess if they block here, sort of like the damage is the same, we're not doing any more. But I think we still push with everything. It's pretty good. I guess now what we can do is we can let that resolve and then march the Denic if we really want to. I think it's actually probably worth it. Yeah, unfortunately we've got Thalia, so we gotta pay the extra price, but. Like we've got decent board presence here. And now we can start using officer if we whiff on land. Okay, well, I mean, that's pretty good. <laughs> That'll work.
Yeah, and Ossification is super good in this matchup here too. Don't think we do it yet. I mean, we definitely want to get rid of Warden, but I think we probably just drop Adversary to start getting creatures out. And then if we draw into land, we can go for Night Errant, which feels pretty good. Question is, do they have the turn two Night Errant play? So I'm not sure if I want to go for ossification here or adversary plus officer. I kind of like ossification. I mean, because warden is one of their, their problem creatures. And it does slow down their own knight errants. I mean, ossification is like better on the sanguine evangelists, but they only have two in the deck usually. Yeah, I think I'm going to ossification here. And then just go officer and be set up for knight errant next turn. Then we can use Adversary to pump later. It's close. I could certainly see like wanting to play Adversary here, though I think that'd be fine too. That was pretty good. <laughs> oh, wow. Uh, Night Errant's great and everything, but free Adeline, I'll take that all day. Question is, do they have the Gleeful Demolition? Not yet. Okay, good news there. That's a nice pickup. Now we can Adversary, Pump. So we could just Knight Errant here. Um, I guess we should Adeline attack with Adeline first. Otherwise we could full send. Then they get like free kill, free kill. We push for seven, 10. Yeah, they're dead, Never mind. That works. I suppose they could have, actually if they have reinforcements in hand, it's a little bit different. Yeah, reinforcements would be rough. Hmm. They'd have to triple block the Adeline though. This still feels pretty good. Yeah, they had the reinforcements. Okay, that's fair.
So they need like another reinforcements to turn this around. Yeah, I think we just knight errant here. Like we could, I suppose, full send. But then they could take out our adversary. We're only pushing two, we drop them to one. Suppose, how do they block here? They block like here and here, take two, go to one. I think we just want Knight Errant. I suppose the other play there, we, we could have uh, tapped that differently and gone for three. That actually might have been better. Would have been a little bit of a slower play. Yeah, because now if we push, they can double block, kill the Adeline. We drop them to one. Trade for Warden. That's probably still good enough, though. Unless they have another... Oh, they had another... <laughs> All right. Keeping it interesting. I think that's still lethal though. I mean, like if we take out their warden, they have no blockers for our flyer. They need to draw well here. I guess like another case would do it to get rid of our phantom. Yeah, even though they had the card that we like didn't want, it still wasn't that bad. All right, let's take a look at the stats. So we are currently at 78% win rate, uh, seven wins and two losses with this build. So I've been very happy with it. Yeah, it looks like um, so far at least just a couple games in, but about 50-50 with Mono Red. 2-0 um, against Mono Blue, 2-0 against Boros Convoke, and 1-0 against Esper Legends. Um, yeah, better here on the play than on the draw, but we'll get some more games in, and we will see you here for the next one.